His work as composer and painter paved the way for the revival of Lithuanian culture. I'm the Classical Nerd, and today we're talking about Michalhoz Konstantinas Chulionis. I hope I said that right. Chulionis was born in 1875 in what is now Lithuania. From early on, he was drawn to the musical arts, learning to play by ear when other kids were just learning to read. His immense sight-reading ability allowed him to learn many instruments, primarily the flute, and he graduated from the Warsaw Conservatory in 1899. Many Lithuanians, although part of the Russian Empire, actually spoke Polish. After his graduation, he continued to pursue his musical studies in Leipzig before returning to Warsaw in 1902. He was beginning to see himself as Lithuanian, even though that country didn't actually exist yet, while he was studying the visual arts at the Warsaw School of Fine Arts. Two factors helped him along in his newfound nationalistic pride. The first was the 1905 Russian Revolution, which eased up on the various ethnic groups in Eastern Europe that were currently under the Empire's control. The second was his relationship to the woman who was to become his wife, through whom he learned better Lithuanian. Because of these factors, Lithuanians can rightly turn to Chilionis as the founder of specifically Lithuanian art. He was one of the founders of the Lithuanian Artistic Union, and was part of the first exhibition of specifically Lithuanian art anywhere in the world. Sadly, his marriage only lasted a year before he started suffering such severe depression that he had to be hospitalized in an asylum called the Red Manor. He was on a walk one day and contracted pneumonia, and died at the age of 35. Exhaustion, spurred on by his manic creativity and lack of money, was seen as the root cause. Because his short life ended with a losing battle with mental illness, and that he wasn't recognized worldwide until after his death, some people see Chilionis as the Lithuanian version of Vincent van Gogh. And yes, that's actually how you pronounce van Gogh's name. But unlike van Gogh, Chilionis was actually known in Lithuanian circles and turned musical heads while in his lifetime as well. He just didn't achieve the international renown until posthumously. In a heartbreaking twist of fate, Chilionis never actually got to see his own daughter. It can rightfully be said that it is under Chilionis' purview that Lithuanian artistic culture came into its own, out of the shadow of the Russian Empire. He isn't as known as a composer because his abstract and highly evocative paintings are just better known. He was equally talented in both because he was, by his own admission, synesthetic, that is, possessing an internalized relationship between the perception of sound and color. He didn't just think of music visually, like a lot of synesthetic composers do. Rather, he thought of his paintings musically, and often gave them names generally only afforded to compositions. In fact, he had a series of seven paintings called sonatas, some of which have multiple movements, i.e. multiple paintings. For Trillionis, the sonata was the ultimate form of expression, encompassing more than just sound. He'd even go so far as to include drawings and doodlings in his musical manuscripts. As best musicologists can figure, Trillionis wrote around 400 pieces, which amounts to the same number of paintings that he produced, although the number of lost manuscripts far exceeds the number of lost paintings. Like a lot of composers, he collected folk tunes of his homeland and then proceeded to incorporate those into his pieces. He also occasionally wrote poems, was interested in photography, and was obsessed with fields ranging from geology to numismatics. In a letter to his brother, he said that all of his creative work was dedicated to Lithuania, which conveniently was also his reason for turning down an otherwise cushy job at the Warsaw Conservatory. A Lithuanian opera, in collaboration with his wife, was in the planning stages when he passed away. His paintings really toe the line towards the abstract, and so does his music. Though steeped in the past, one can hear all sorts of techniques that foreshadow the 20th century just bubbling under the surface. Symbolism and modernism combine in both media. Abstraction for Trillionis was not based on color so much as geometry, another subject that he enjoyed. Philosophical ideas are also put into place, as Trillionis uses his art to grapple with man's place in the universe. And lest you think that that's simply something that he can only communicate in the visual arts, it's also at play in his music. Composer and legendary Lithuanian politician Vytautas Landsbergis says that Trillionis' music too exhibits this kind of intimation with infinity, the feeling that the work goes on long after the last note has died away. Chilionis' life reminds us that creative individuals need not be limited to one mode of artistic expression, 
as well as that art serves a powerful place in the revitalization of a national culture. While there have been composers who have dabbled in painting and painters who have dabbled in composition, it's refreshing to see a figure so at home in both. <laughs> ¶¶